Hello, today we embark on an exciting journey back in time to explore the sitcom Drop the Dead Donkey. I'm sure many of you have fond memories of this classic show. Drop the Dead Donkey is a timeless gem that has left indelible mark on television history. Join us as we relive the magic, revisiting those with the entire cast of then and now. We will explore the names and initial ages of the talented actors on the show and witness their transformation in 2024. So without further ado, let's dive into the world of Drop the Dead Donkey. David Troughton was born in 1950 in a sitcom he plays Roy Merchant Jr. In 1998, when he was in a sitcom, he was 38 and now he's 73. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. I'll convey your best wishes to my... Father. Fine, but um, I'm going to have a go. It's my turn. So I will give it my best shot. It's an unusual story in the fact that it's like a children's. Susanna Doyle was born in 1966. In the sitcom, she plays Joy Merriweather. In 1991, when she joined the sitcom, she was 25, and now she's 57. It's crap. Yes, <laughs> Perhaps you could use the photocopier on the floor upstairs. Terrific, marvellous, yes. I can spend the whole day climbing up. In a high-rise flat, uh, I initially wrote it for a friend of mine who was turning 50. Um, he was a very beautiful, successful model, but just it's an interesting time of life. David Swift was born in 1931. In the sitcom, he plays Henry Davenport. In 1990, when he was in the sitcom, he was 59, and sadly he passed away on April 8, 2016, at the age of 85. You must listen very carefully to what they say. You must try and understand their point of view, and then you must ask yourself the crucial question. How can I stitch up this lying bastard? You can upstage by listening hard, and she did that just naturally. She would walk away with scenes, but she was listening and trusting her friend. Robert Duncan was born in 1952. In the sitcom, he played Gus Hedges. In 1990, when he was in the sitcom, he was 38, and now he is 71. Yes. Are you seriously going to go out there and tell her she's being fired? Oh, no, George. I think it would be wrong of me to interfere in any way in your operation. I'm not telling you. I'll For Voyager that I was super proud of and was really different and interesting. We filmed in Jamaica. I was there for almost a year. And I Matthew Cotto was born in 1967. In the sitcom, he plays B.C. Dean. In 1994, when he was in the sitcom, he was 27, and now he's 57 years old. Globally. Mm, production assistant. Has to be available from Monday. Right. See, uh, uh, the play's uh, based on um, Uncle Vanya, uh, which is obviously set in uh, Russia, 1880s. Neil Pearson was born in 1959. In the sitcom, he plays Dave Chunley. In 1990, when he was in the sitcom, he was 31, and now he's 64. Yesterday, we were discussing the cabinet, and I asked her what she thought of Portillo. She said she'd been there on her holidays, but she preferred Amalfi. <laughs> She's a monster. You have never heard them before. This is, in effect, a new series of Hancock's Half Hour. So, um, I thought it would be a good idea to remake these. Hayden Wynn was born in 1957. In the sitcom, she plays Alex Bates. In 1990, when she was in the sitcom, she was 33 years old. And sadly, she passed away on October 20th, 2023, at 66. A tight-assed housewife from Basildon who's prepared to hang muggers personally and wants to bid for the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's out into the lobby where we'll interview four rent -equ the great good fortune of, of having a very loving, close yes. family and, and a great marriage. So, um, and that's what, you know, we had. Victoria Wicks was born in 1959. In the sitcom, she plays Sally Smedley. In 1990, when she was in the sitcom, she was 31, and now she's 64. Chemical weapons in the Gulf, massacres in Soweto. If this continues, people will start to associate me with gloom, depression. Nausea, disgust, is it would be wonderful playing her again? Oh, it's it's absolute joy. I mean, I have to warn people, Sally's views haven't softened. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah Stewart was born in 1966. In the sitcom, she plays Jenny. In 1990, when she was in the sitcom, she was 24, and now she's 57. It's 
polished. Oh, pride and professionalism. We have to look, sleep, breathe, smell professional. Oh, and by the way, our pot plants aren't in flower. This company for about 35 minutes and oh, kept wow. saying, I should, I should, yeah, because he kept drawing me in oh. and in and in. And I, I kept going, I think I should go home now, you know. Jeff Raw was born in 1951 in the sitcom he plays George Dent. In 1990, when he was in the sitcom, he was 39, and now he's 72 years old. However, Gus has just given me a set of overnight figures, which would seem to suggest he's increasing our ratings considerably. Oh, right, which is obviously the prime... Takes we had to do it. So what you don't realise is that every time I had to run down and find the dead body, it was like there were quite a few takes of that, an endless take. Stephen Tomkinson was born in 1965 in the sitcom he plays Damien Day. In 1990, when he was in the sitcom, he was 25, and now he's 58. Every cow in that herd had BSE, but could we get any of them to stagger around in a wobbly kind of way? No. They just lay there doing bugger all and looking totally... That mm -hmm. had to be investigated. Another neighbour had thought that... Uh, because, I mean, I had, I had the phone in this house. Nigel Beckram was born in 1940 in the sitcom he plays Minister. In 1990, when he joined the sitcom, he was 50 years old, and now he's 83. Uh, with respect, Henry, it's not as simple as that. The lack of parental discipline is just merely the tip of an iceberg. It's a very large one. Uh, many... Ingrid Lacey was born in 1958. In the sitcom, she plays Helen Cooper. In 1993, when she joined the sitcom, she was 35, and now she's 65. Bulgarian nuclear reactor. <laughs> but frankly, I'm rather less worried about the fornicating and rather more worried about the fawning. Why do we have to walk on eggshells just because this woman's decided? When we reflect on the incredible journey of Drop the Dead Donkey that took place between 1990 to 1998, witnessing their growth and transformation, we can see that the connection from those years left a lasting legacy. Their story continues to resonate with fans around the world. And as always, show some love, hit the like button, subscribe for more, and hit the bell to never miss my new content.